<laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, gamers, and fellow League of Legends lovers, welcome back to another Patch Notes review from the giga genius mind that is Chris Allen. Me. So, first and foremost, I have to apologize. Now, for those of you very keen subscribers out there, you might notice that it says patch 13.17. And for the even keener subscribers out there that can actually read, you might also notice it says five days ago. Right now, it is currently 1.30 a.m. on Monday, Labor Day, 9-4-2023. This is not the day the patch notes came out, or the day after, which is sometimes when I get to it. This is five days after, as evident as it says five days ago. I completely forgot that patch notes is out. One, because I have a bot that tells me when stuff comes out for games, and I have it subbed to League of Legends, and it didn't update me. So ultimately, I'm blaming that one first and foremost. But number two... Also, because the stars aligned and the event for League just ended, the Soul Fighter event, and because there's no pass on League, I wasn't paying attention to League, I had my fill of League and I was done with it. So again, I kind of completely forgot and I didn't get updated as I usually do. But regardless, I was planning to play Genshin and Star Rail for the rest of the night, and I will still do so. But now, instead of doing that earlier which it's 1.30 a.m., it's not really that early. But instead of doing it now, I will do it later because now we have to go over patch notes. And I was kind of confused too because this whole week I was like, I know I'm forgetting something. I know something's up. And lo and behold, it was patch notes. So anyway, without further ado, I do apologize that this is late, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, this doesn't really get views anyway, but who cares? Let's do it anyway. This is for the future and for the people who do care. Anyway, Shining Bright Like a Cosmic Matriarch Belveth. I'm pretty sure that's a play on the song Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Uh, in this week's patch, we have a few goals. First, we're taking a pass at fighters who have found themselves unsupported by the current fighting item optimizations, or sorry, options. This includes changes to the kits of Double A Aatrox, Grim Job, Venus Flytrap, and Jin Zhao to the Arena, who are frequently buying full squishy builds but should feel more comfortable building a mix of damage and durability. This is where overall, I think League has had an issue with the items and obviously they're addressing that by removing Mythics, which is, I think, a step in the right direction. Show gets really good. But ultimately, I think until that happens, League is kind of in a tough spot. And by League, I mean Riot. Riot's kind of in a tough spot here because... I felt for a long time that tanks are fucking useless and god-awful. Not only do I feel like they're useless and god-awful, why wouldn't you just go damage, right? This is why the bot lane is what it is. This is why it's filled with mages and assassins and not ADCs for the most part. Or real supports. So I feel like they need to just buff tank or at least buff tank items because it really doesn't feel like you're tanky anymore. So on Hecarim and Vine and Zhao, why would you go somewhat tanky you know why would you go and mix when at the end of the day you can actually kill the person and then die whereas before you just wouldn't do anything unless you're playing with an actual team that can play around you but let's be honest in solo queue that's not happening so yeah they definitely got to buff up i would say tanky items but let's see what they're gonna do second we're amping up some fighter items uh we're giving some items more durability and letting fighters rely on gore drinker which was a big issue for a while stride breaker which i feel is kind of useless or the significantly changed spear of shojin which i feel no one built besides maybe Jax, as items that give them enough tankiness to perform in a deadly team fight shojin's buffs specifically are aimed at making it an attractive second item for anyone who started to snowball in case you missed it we took a deeper dive into this topic in a quick gameplay thoughts that i'm not going to go over because i'm already doing this late enough so check that out if you're interested, which I am not. <clears throat> Third, we are taking a look at the overall champion durability and addressing some allies which have lost a lot of tankiness recently. So the two fucking Wind Brothers have had their durability addressed with the loss of Shield Bow, which I don't think matters because they're fucking good anyway. We're also bringing Samira up to a new normal. 
So this is interesting to see that they're doing this after her ultimate has landed. Oh, sorry, sorry. Her legendary has landed. Because that god-awful abomination should not be called an ultimate. And Quinn and Akshan have shifted to, shifted to a squishier build, build recently, so they're receiving changes too. And speaking of shield bow, the item that no one fucking buys, because why would you buy that when you could get BT instead? We're tweaking crit lifesteal items to make shield bow a more attractive option compared to, what did I just say? BT. Additionally, we're nerfing even shroud to be in line with the lock of the iron solari. If you are in gauge support, which I know those aren't really played anymore, you are going to go even shroud. Fuck lock it. It's the same problem that is apparent with BT and shield bow. Why are you going to go for the shield when you could just go damage? In total, these changes shall bring the average durability of champions, which was which has waned lately. We're going to see that. I'm, I'm questioning that. But anyway, also making a long-awaited return to this patch is the Blue Essence Emporium. The Emporium will go live for two weeks starting September 6th, so in about two days from recording this. Make sure to check it out and spend the Blue Essence before it goes away on September 20th. If you're running low on essence, have a bunch of champion shards sitting around, check out the new mass disenchant feature. So some stuff to talk about. Number one, the essence emporium is obviously back now. An important thing to note, they took it out for a while. Riot took out the essence emporium for a while because they're a billion dollar company that does not how to, doesn't know how to code a client. This resulted in them having to take it away just so they can upgrade the technology on the back end so they could bring it back with essentially no new updates to us on the front facing end. So essentially, the Essence Emporium is pretty much the same. Now, the new feature that they mentioned, the Mass Disenchant, is a step in the right direction, but it is not done, it is not finished. It's very bare bones, and if you have any sort of champion shard you want, or you want to deselect, you literally can't do it. It's either all or nothing, pick it all, or don't do it at all, do it one by one. Which, again, Riot's going to address, but they say they have limitations, they say they have stuff in the pipeline that needs more attention and again they're a billion dollar company but for some reason this is a big deal to them they kind of sound like overwatch to me because the overwatch team likes to make a big deal out of nothing a lot of times so that's that it'll get even better in the future but it's good that we have something now at least so let's actually get into the patch and there's going to be a little bit of controversy we have to say however we'll leave that towards the end in the skin section but um, yeah, there's definitely something we gotta say about that Jin skin. If you know, you know, but we'll go over it. Anyway, double A Aatrox. What do I think of Aatrox? I think Aatrox is kind of shit. I mean, granted, the league passes over, the league event is over, so I'm not playing too much, but even when I did play, I barely saw double A Aatrox. I feel like double A Aatrox has really lost his way. Back, back in the day, double A Aatrox was known for his res. He really had no other spot in the game aside from his res and just like he was a pretty decent long-term fighter that lasted. So that was cool. And then for a while he had that, then he became good. And then they reworked him and he still had his res for a little bit, but then they took that away. Aatrox's main selling point at that point was his healing. And then they nerfed that to shit. And now what's his main selling point? God, if I fucking know. So let's see what they're doing. Uh, passive damage type adjusted to magic. W damage type adjusted to magic as well. So Aatrox's most common build is Duskblade into Cyrilda's, which leaves him incredibly squishy, making Aatrox very feast or famine how he usually is. Switching his passive and W to magic means that lethality and armor pen won't scale his damage or self-healing as much. Lowering the opportunity cost of tankier options like Gore Drinker, Stridebreaker, or Black Cleaver should allow him to play a bit more like a Juggernaut instead of actual fun killing people. Uh, excuse me. So, I kind of take this as a nerf in and of itself. By itself, I would say this is a nerf. However, with the potential changes coming to the fighter items, this might be a buff. Because if the fighter items are already getting better, he should gravitate towards them more just naturally. But... Riot is the same people that wants the ball in to flourish into anything and everything. But if anyone does anything else outside of there, Riot's going to beat it down into the ground. So they really want to make sure Aatrox does not go lethality, which is what it is. But I would take this on its own as a nerf, but we got to see what happens to the item. So now we have Akshal. So what do we think of Akshal? Health growth increased. 
armor growth increased attack damage growth decreased interesting i don't really think akshan is that good potentially he's niche i mean obviously he's a mid lane adc in the volume he really doesn't work he doesn't output the damage of an adc he, he gets close he definitely gets close but he's not no hyper carry he's more very niche based on his little like resing mechanic and he has a lot of stuff going for him with the stealth with the hook with the old he has a lot of bells and whistles which aren't too much gimmicky they actually do matter but because he has all those they he trades it away for damage straight up damage he just can't compete but it's not like he's falling behind the race completely he's like in last place ish so i'm very curious to what they're changing because i don't feel like he's that crazy like crazy bad or crazy good but let's see overall champion durability especially for squishies has fallen somewhat over the past year while still higher than 12.9 right before the durability update we've lost about half of the gains from the patch on marksmen specifically so this is riot also confirming that marksmen are ass not all champions have been affected but some felt this durability loss more than others akshan quinn and samira have changed this patch to help remedy this thank god while yasuo and yon have had them earlier in the year cool Akshan's builds have moved away from the slightly tankier on-hit builds, which was weird, but still worked, weirdly enough. He's found new successful builds, which is fine, which Riot doesn't believe, but his combats now resolve very quickly, which is what it's supposed to be, he's an ADC. We're looking to slow down these fights just a little bit, so both him and his opponents have more, more breathing room. Interesting. These changes are pretty small. Ultimately, less AD gives him fewer crit multipliers, which raises the relative value of on-hit damage. So they're essentially saying what they want for Akshan is on-hit. So the health growth is going up. The armor growth is going up. So he is getting tankier. And then his attack damage growth is going down. So 0.5, if I get my handy-dandy calculator out here, 0.5 times 18 is ultimately losing 9 AD. So... We're down almost 10 AD, Riot's favorite number, so that's cool. Alright, uh, these are really weenie. Let's go to Blitzcrank! So what do I think of Blitzcrank? I think Blitz is really weak. He has been for a long-ass time. I think one of the best changes they can ever do, and that they should have done a while ago, is revert the W. Now, a lot of people won't understand what I'm saying, because this was an old-school change to Blitzcrank. Back in the day, Blitzcrank's W never used to slow you. You used to activate it, and Blitzcrank would just get free move speed, and that's it. You literally basically used to always use it off cooldown. There was no trade-off. Now, they wanted to add a trade-off. They wanted to make Blitzcrank balance, and at the time, I think it was okay, because there wasn't much supports he had to compete with aside from Thresh, right? But now there's all these other supports out, and supports aren't even really used in the bot lane anymore. So I think at this point, one of the best changes they could do to at least make Blitzcrank pretty good is just take away the slow on the W. If they take that away, I think he's pretty good. But let's see what they're doing, because I see a paragraph here. So, oh my sweet Jesus Christ. I'm not going to read all this. Historically, Blitzcrank has always been a relatively straightforward champion. You hook, they die. Which is something both we and the players appreciated, and we want to focus on that. To that end, we've decided to roll back the changes that we made last year to help Blitz play in the jungle, which... You know, just in and of itself is like, why? I, I think Riot kind of shat themselves with the jungle and like what's happening in it. They basically are like, okay, everyone has to jungle. Everyone has to jungle. Graves, Talon, they're junglers now. Zed. <coughs> and it's like, what the fuck was this? Throughout the past year, in Darius too. Throughout the past year, it's been difficult to have Blitz succeed in both roles. And even when they were viable in the jungle, it turned out players weren't interested in playing him there because it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Going forward, we'll be focusing on balancing Blitz in support. Thank God. So his Bates health is going up, his MR is going up, his attack speed is going up, his ratio, oh no, sorry, his attack speed and ratios are going down, thank goodness, and his shield strength is now getting equalized at 30, so it's a buff early, nerf late, Blitz is Blitz, this is really whatever. Oh wait, no, there's more, holy shit. The mana cost of W is going down, the bonus attack speed as if that mattered is going down, but that's really a non-nerf. The E is now going back to 100% AD, Jesus Christ. Uh, excuse me. It costs less mana, and Blitz is actually one of the few champions in the game that mana costs still matter for. So this is actually helping. And then the bonus damage to non-champions is removed. So he can jungle, with the Z at least. And then the R is getting a buff. 
based on mana. Okay. Overall, Blitz is better. I think he's better in ways that don't really matter, but he is better. But uh, yeah, I don't think this is going to matter. Elise, I always say this and I'm going to say it again. Elise is a champion that needs to be either reworked or removed. I hate this champion. Her and Lee Sin are fucking god-awful. And there's another one that I forgot about, but I'll just leave it for now. But yeah, no, I think Elise is really fucking useless. She's only an early game champion, which I fucking hate, which is why I hate Pantheon. But at least Pantheon somewhat scales, kind of. At least harder than Elise does, I think. Elise literally becomes just a stun bot late game. And obviously she can kill the AD, but who can't? So I better see some fucking Elise buffs here, because if they nerf her, I'll be shocked. But let me see the shit. Elise may be the spider queen, but she isn't the queen of the jungle. whoop de doo Howdy doody. The fucking cow. Her ability to declare is currently weaker than many other junglers, which is ironic because she has summons. Often taking longer and finishing with less health, which is in turn making her first gank, which she should excel at, weaker. So this is an early game champion that sucks in the early game, comparatively. Amazing. We're also looking to adjust her in the later stages of the game so that she still has strong pick potential when her other strengths have fallen off. I don't know what her other strengths are in late game, but okay. So, her passive. Um, it's getting buffed by two. Wow. W wow, and the on-hit healing is going up by two. That is so terrible. That's like a slap in the face. And then the cocoon, the stun duration is going up by 0.4 seconds. That's actually a really big amount. That's actually nothing to scoff at. 2 to 2.4 is already kind of crazy. It's fucking wild. So the cocoon change, really huge. The passive, maybe I'm undervaluing it, but I don't play Elise and I don't plan to. So I would say Elise is buffed, but, you know, not fully from the passive, more from the cocoon. But at least it's definitely better. Not really addressing her main issues that I have with her, but better. Nar! Okay, so we have changes to Nar. I haven't seen Nar in fucking forever. I'll be straight dead honest. Nar has been like off the radar for me, and I think in pro play, which is why they haven't changed him. So if I had to take a guess, they're probably gonna buff him because Nar is actually a pretty hype champion to watch, at least viewing wise. And then to play, he's actually pretty decent too. It's just I feel like he fills so many different niches with his mini and his big form it's kind of hard to balance what they want him to be good at and what they want him to be bad at because if nar is good he essentially almost has no weakness you can never really gank him successfully if he's mini and if he's mega he shouldn't lose the fight anyway so you're basically dealing with the perfect champion who does what he wants when he wants so let's see he's probably sucking ass though because again i haven't seen him so they're probably buffing him Gunnar has been struggling to find success in both solo queue and pro. In order to strengthen his laning phase, we'll be increasing the base damage of his Mega Q and W so that he can actually all in. So let me see. Uh, the damage of the Q is almost getting doubled at the first level, which is actually crazy. I mean, it's going from 25 to 45, which doesn't seem like a lot, but again, it's almost doubling. So that's actually pretty wild. And then the W, the wallop, is happening the same thing wow he's actually getting a ton of base damage this is pretty good and in a fight if you collect the q you could probably q twice so this is definitely a pretty decent buff holy shit very nice for nar yo what is with all the fucking paragraphs holy shit do they not realize i'm doing this at almost like 2 a.m anyway what do i think of hecarim i mean i watched dante so i think hecarim is pretty okay even though he feeds on it sometimes um, I think Hecarim is really weird, though. I think he's kind of an outdated champion, because he's playing with a niche about speed that really is, like, it's fun stupid, but it's not fun good, if you know what I mean. And if he's good, it's not because of the stupid speed passive or anything. It's good because he's either over two number-wise, or the items are exceptionally good on him. But, um, let's see what they're doing. I imagine they're gonna buff him, but let's see. Ekram's current builds are very squishy. Okay, they're buffing him. He's starting to adopt Spear of Shojin, which is great, but he's still building Duskblade, which Riot doesn't like, and Mana Moon. We're going to try to lower his his reliance on Mana Moon. If he continues to build it, it'll provide less damage, but if he doesn't build it, his mana issues won't be nearly as severe. So they're probably going to buff the base mana, but nerf the scaling, which is fine. 
By not having to build Mana Moon, he should open be open to buying other fighter items. Additionally, Hecarim's current best item is Spear, which is getting buffed, so he's actually going to be way better, allegedly. We expect him to gain quite a bit of power, so we're tagging him with a preemptive nerf. Wow! He'll more than make up for it with a bonus health he'll receive from other items. But let's see. Let's see how this goes. So, the base mana is going up. Like I said, the mana growth is going down. Which is interesting, because I feel like you're losing more mana, but it is supposed to be a nerf, so it makes sense. The mana regen is higher. Mana regen growth is higher, so that's cool. So you'll keep getting it back, but you just won't have as much total pool, which is fine. The Q is getting buffed, but again, I didn't think that was an issue, but the mana thing matters, I guess. And then the W. W is also getting buffed cost-wise. And then the Omni Vamp is now simply just 20% damage. It no longer scales with damage, but it's still pretty good. Actually, no, it's getting nerfed pretty heavily, actually. 25 with scaling to now just flat 20 no matter what. That's actually a pretty big nerf. Hmm. See, that's where I like the old W because it made you feel like fighting was worth it because you healed so much in the fight rather than just being initially healthy. I mean, it's kind of the same effect, but I feel like one definitely feels better than the other when you're in the fight and you're just like lasting longer because you're seeing your health tick back up from doing damage. But, um, you know, if they're nerfing his damage builds, if they want him to build more hybrid tanky, then it makes sense. Actually, well, it doesn't make sense because they should keep it high anyway because he's ultimately not going to heal as much because he's not building damage. So I kind of count this as a stupid change, realistically. I think they're kind of just... The, these buffs are really wiener. I think they're just nerfing Hecarim overall. But again, we got to see the items. On its own, I see this as a nerf, but the items might make up for it. Kane! What do I think of Kane? I think Kane... Um... What do I think? I haven't really seen Kane too much, but then again, I'm trying to think what junglers I do see. I don't really know. I don't really focus on jungle. I feel like Kane has to be okay. I feel like Kane always suffers from the same issue of red is always better than blue. And if blue is better than red, that means blue is massively overtuned because red should always be better just by the nature of it. Blue is for fun. Red is actually good. But aside from that, I don't really know what they're going to do. Uh, so let's see. Kane has been an absolute terror for a while now, so we're taking a pretty big swing at lowering his power level. Right now, Shadow Assassin outperforms Dark and Kane. Wow. Especially at a higher skill bracket, so we're targeting nerfs that affect Shadow Assassin more. Ultimately, his W doesn't have a ton of counterplay for his opponents. Some moves aren't supposed to. Not everything has to have counterplay. So reducing his power allows to address both lower his frustration and poke, and hit our goals regarding his two forms. So what are they doing to this shit? They're lowering the bonus AD ratio, so they are nerfing Assassin. And then they are nerfing the base damage as well, by 5. Interesting. Kane now restores himself to maximum health and mana upon transforming into Shadow Assassin or Darken. This feature is disabled in ARM. Wow! This is like a nothing burger. This is literally just weenie. I mean, again, it, it does matter for Shadow Assassin. For Rost, it really doesn't. Kha'Zix. Okay. Kha'Zix, I've heard, is he's been a terror. And I've actually seen it one game where he got disgustingly fed off of, like, crap teammates. And he actually started cleaving people. Now, granted, we were full team squishies, but even then. Bug, I've heard, is going crazy. I don't think he is crazy, but I've heard he's been going crazy. And I've seen a fed bug in what he could do. But he could always do that anyway. The squishies, at least. So... I'm almost positive they're nerfing him, and hallelujah, thank God, because this guy's useless anyway. So, does he deserve a nerf? No, I don't think so. But by getting a nerf, is it making me happy? Yes, it is. Kha'Zix, like Kane, has been an overperforming jungler for the last couple months. He can use a small nerf, which is what we're delivering here to his Q. We're keeping Kha'Zix's poke from his W at full power, which I didn't think was a lot of poke, but okay. Considering players can hide behind minions or body block it. Yeah, it's pretty ass. Instead, we're going for a bit for his all-in power, which is the main driving force and I would say power fantasy of Kha'Zix. He should still have plenty of damage. He just won't spike quite as hard. So what are they doing? Um, his base is not getting touched and his bonus is just scaling by 5%. Less. But it's bonus AD, so it is ultimately overall less, but still. Harder hitting than base damage. Or total damage, sorry. 
Uh, it's almost insignificant, but it's something. So he's slightly worse. Not too good, but slightly worse. And not too good as, as I mean um, the nerf. Like, the nerf is almost insignificant. Kindred! What do I think of Kindred? I actually think Kindred is pretty strong. I've seen some Kindreds, and this is where I fully think Kindred is a skilled champion. I think if you're skilled at Kindred, with how good she is right now, I think you could do a lot. I think you could actually carry games. Now, if you're not good at Kindred, you look like a fucking lamb ready for the slaughter, about to, like, get hit with the deer in headlights sort of look. But aside from that, I feel like Kindred is relatively strong. Which is crazy, because she's an AD. So, they're probably nerfing her. Let's see. Despite our best efforts, which is not much, Kindred have maintained a relative stranglehold on high-level solo queue. This time we're aiming at their gank power, which should be a win for their opponents all around. With less free base damage in their kit, we expect Kindred to build a more damage-focused instead of largely tanky option like Steric's Gage. Wow. So, she was basically doing good because she wasn't building AD, she was building not AD. Got it. So her E, oh my god, there's a lot of numbers here. So her E is going down in terms of missing health and scaling missing health. Okay. And then the slow is going way down from 50 to 30. Wow. Not insignificant, but it's only on the E, which I didn't think was that big of a deal. But 50 to 30 is pretty big. That's a whole 20% you're losing. Not overall, but like number-wise, you're losing 20. I think in the grand scheme of things, that's what percentage? I don't know, because it's 2 a.m. But yeah, that's pretty big, actually. That is a pretty big damage cut on the E. Wow. Uh, definitely not insignificant. Pretty good nerfs to Kindred. Lux. This is the bane of my existence. I hate seeing this champion. At least support mid i don't mind and it's sad because i actually have had good luxes but god is she not a support it's so stupid i hope the fucking nerf the shit out of this bitch but let's see in this patch we're aiming to bolster up lux as a mid lane damage carry while being cautious around over buffing lux support i'll tell you this right now if they buff her mid they're buffing her support we have some mana regen nerfs to keep support lux in check even though support lux builds mana regen out the ass because that's what they give supports but okay quote unquote but in exchange we're giving her a scaling cooldown to her q and more damage in her passive what the fuck so the base mana regen is going down by one i honestly don't really know how big a deal this is but it seems like nothing the passive is getting giga buffed in terms of damage and, and scaling wow base and scaling got massively buffed the cooldown on q is going down for some reason oh dear lord and then the e is going down in damage but by like five so it really doesn't matter lux is getting giga buffed i would count this as a giga buff to lux oh dear god what purgatory am i in support lux is so much better the fury okay what do i think of the fury so this is weird right i've only really played the fury in the arena the new game mode riot released and I thought she was hot garbage. I thought I was going to love Nefiri, and I ended up hating her, sadly enough. So this is where I'm very scared for Briar, the newest champion, coming soon. I very much am excited for Briar. It looks like I'm going to love Briar. She looks like Warwick and Master Yi with some extra bells and whistles, which I very much like. I love auto-attacking champions. I mean, I'm an AD main, for Christ's sake. But... This is where, for Nefiri, I thought I was going to love her, because I love summons and I love bleed, both of which she has. And I ended up, at least from the arena, thinking she sucked fucking ass. So it was very weird. I don't think she's that good, but I don't know. I've seen the Koreans do crazy things with her, but it's the Koreans. They're going to abuse anything. So it really depends what Riot wants to do with her and who she wants Nefiri, or who they want Nefiri to be good with. If they don't want her being good with the professionals, which I count the Koreans as professionals, at least in their solo queue, they're probably going to nerf her. If they want her to be good with the casuals, I think they should buff her. But let's see what they're doing. Um, Even with the nerfs last patch, Nefiri is still holding strong. Okay, they're nerfing her. Wow. In this patch, we're looking to reduce the uptime of her pack mates, which is her main drawing point. This should make killing them in lane a more viable strategy. And forced Nefiri to preserve them a bit more. We also made it easier for melee champions to clear the pack. 
which helps offset the fact that it's much easier to land both Qs on a melee. Similarly, we're reducing the poke and sustain of Q2 while keeping it its execute power intact. It's still worth hitting both Qs, but the value on high health targets won't be quite as prominent. Okay. So her base health is going down, so she's slightly squishier. The various pack mates will now take 100% bonus damage from melees. Interesting. Their cooldown is going up by like 5 seconds. Interesting. And then the Q. Oh my god, this is a lot of numbers. The Q is going down in damage by 5. And the bonus AD is getting gutted. Holy shit. And then the recast damage is going down by 10. But they're keeping the bonus scaling, thank goodness. So it's more like an Echo Q where the second, I guess, shot of it... Even though Echo Q kind of just comes back to you. But for the Fury Q, the second shot of it really does the majority of the damage now. The recast heal is going down, which I think that's fair. And then the E. The E is going down by 10% bonus. Ugh. And then the damage is going down as well. Wow, I feel like they're kind of slapping the Fury a little, a little too hard. I think they're slapping her a lot, especially with that Q damage. Her Q is her main part of her kit that essentially helps her mostly against range too. I mean, melees, I think she kind of just should beat by nature of her kit. But range, she's going to have a much harder time against now, which is interesting. Overall, I don't know if these are warranted because, again, I didn't play too much Nefiri. But I'm going to trust Riot here, which is very uncharacteristic and very cautiously I say this. But I'm going to trust them here and say maybe this is needed because, again, I have seen what the Koreans do with Nefiri and it does kind of look unfair. And I fought a fed Nefiri once and I literally just got insta-popped. It was crazy. But anyway, the period is slightly worse. But I don't know if I disagree with it. Oriana. The lady who was almost a support but wasn't. What do I think of Ori? I think Ori is... Sort of getting shadow buffed over and over and over again. And I think she's going to end up in a Vara situation. Where she's very good. And then she's going to get nerfed, and because she is a pretty nice-to-watch champion, and pretty fun, I think a lot of people do enjoy uh, Oriana. She is very unique. I think that they're going to just have to buff her again, and she's going to basically be subject to the Varus cycle, where she's bad, nerf, or sorry, buff, 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 silent buffs, and then she's really good for like a patch, and then she gets struck and back down. But let's see. Oriana has been a few steps behind her Tango. Recently, especially during her mid-game, we want to preserve her current early game weakness while letting her feel a bit more powerful. While she's at her strongest and consistently hitting enemies with her W. So I think the W is my favorite part of the kit, obviously, aside from the ult. I think the W should nuke people. Let's see what they're doing. So it's going from 60 to 70, and the scaling staying the same. But late game, it's going from 240 to 270. So honestly... I like this. I think the W is the main part of the kit that should do damage. The Q really shouldn't do crazy damage because it's such a low cooldown and it's mostly for repositioning. And the damage actually goes down the more people you hit, little known fact. I, yeah, I know this because I used to play Ori, but Ori is in a weird spot. So they can't make her do too much damage because she is kind of a control zoning mage where the ball provides a lot of threat. Now, does it provide a lot of that it doesn't do damage? Not really. So it does need to do some damage, but if she could nuke people... Her entire purpose doesn't really make sense. She's supposed to be able to do some damage, yes, but she's also supposed to disrupt and set up team fights with her ult. Her ult can make or break a team fight, similar to Rumble, similar to Kennen. But if she also nukes them, what's the point of the ult kind of mixing everyone up? She's just going to handle the job herself. This is where I do believe Oriana's role is, strictly speaking, to be a somewhat damage dealer, but also a big setup. A big, you know, team fight setting up person. And again, she can't do that if she's nuking. So I actually think this is okay if they don't go much further. I honestly think Oriana's okay where she's at. Maybe she could be a little bit stronger, which is fine. But I honestly think just for her whole purpose in the game, she should not do a little bit more damage than she's doing right now. Or sorry, she should do a little bit more damage, but not much more than that. But Oriana is definitely better. A decent chunk too. Quindolin. I feel like Quinn is basically associated with Tyler 1 because no one else plays her in my eyes. But uh, I honestly don't know what to say to her. She used to be an ADC and I liked her then. After that, I don't like her anymore except when she goes top, I want to blow my brains out when I'm going against her. 
So let's see what they're doing. Earlier, check Ox out above, we mentioned that several champions lost a meaningful amount of durability. Why Quinn is supposed to have durability, God only knows. Quinn is one such outlier who has moved from skirmisher style battles. I feel like Quinn was just a poker and then an all in her. Like she pokes you down, then she all in you. Or just roams the fuck out of the map. Uh, excuse me. So apparently she used to build Woodsend Blade and BT. Um, frequently opting to build Lethality. Jesus. They want to slow down Quinn's combat pattern and get her back to relying on attack speed. Also giving her enough baseline durability to not get one shot. Wow. So her health growth is going up. So she's getting a little bit more health. The damage on her Q is going down by 20 base. And then her scalings are pretty much staying the same. I wish they would only like include or highlight what's changing. Because the fact that I have to like compare both these is annoying. And then her E. Which I don't really even know does damage. But apparently it does. Is going from 160 to 140. I don't know about nerfing the E. The E already does not do a lot of damage in general. I feel like nerfing it is kind of weird. Um, but the Q getting nerfed by 20 is kind of whatever. I mean, this does force Quinn to kind of take out a nice little drawn out battle, but I still feel like she's going to be around the similar spot. I feel like this is nothing. Let's go next. Samira. Well, obviously, this is a buff, and it's because she has the legendary skin. So let's see. Tamir is the final champion on our list of marksmen, which is sad because marksmen suck, who lost a lot of durability recently. Without the early shield bow, she's been feeling squishy. She certainly has some risk for her high kill reset oriented gameplay. If she wants to stall out her damage to buy shield bow second, she's more than welcome to. But for now, no one's going to do that, by the way, because that goes against Tamir's character. When, but for now, we're giving her baseline durability. So they're giving her 30 health. Wow. That's like maybe an auto. Maybe. That's so ass. Samira is so stupid. I mean, she's still good, but god, I miss old Samira. The biggest thing I wish they gave back to her is the amount of healing she gets from her ult. Which literally doesn't make sense, but we're not going to question it. I just wanted to go back to the old healing because that shit was crazy. I think the main counters to Samira should be just straight CC. If she is allowed to fully ult the enemy team, she should not die. Like, you should not be able to kill her unless you have a very serious, dedicated burst mage like Vagar or something. Vagar Syndra. But Syndra could then CC her, so it doesn't matter. And so could Vagar, technically. But this is where, unless you CC her, I think her ult should be like the I am going to fuck your face wide open ult. And um, that should basically be where... Unless you CC her, she should be able to lifesteal off the ass, which they didn't like because healing was an issue. Overall, this is nothing. Trindamir. So I will say a little spoiler about this. The thing that actually reminded me that I missed patch notes was someone was talking about Trindamir on YouTube that I saw. When I saw this, I was like, oh shit, I missed patch notes. Because apparently this change to Trindamir made him extremely good. In ARAM, he is the number one champion. And in regular play, I think his win rate raised by like 5% or some shit, which is insane. Which is not like a small number. So, uh, what did they do? What did they do to break Trindamir? Trindamir has have a hard time striking fear into the hearts of his opponents, not melees. So we're looking to give him power in a way that brings him more in line with modern melees. But a few other melee skirmishers who have 175, Trundle, Master Yi, and Darius. So these are all the people that have weapons. So he expects us to feel more intuitive. That said, we're aware that the additional 50 range is a lot. So they're preemptively nerfing him. Which also reduces his ability to gain leads at level 1 and 2 all ends, which is what he's also pretty good at. And they're going to keep a close eye on him. Yeah, right. So, his range is going up from 125 to 175. Huge, gigantic buff, giga buff. And then his attack damage is going from 72 to 68. Which is not bad. It is not bad at all. I think in terms of what he's losing to what he's getting is perfectly worth it. And again, I know the spoiler of he was actually really good after this. So that's that. And I don't see a mid-patch update here. So he's still like this. So he's pretty good. Twisted Fate. Malcolm's homosexual lover. What do I think of Twisted Fate? I feel like Twisted Fate is a champion that back in the day was similar to blitzcrank where he was very he still is sort of niche too 
but he did something he was very simple and he did it well but now that a lot more stuff has come out i feel like he's been overshadowed and just can't keep up so i think he definitely needs a buff because if you think about it what's tf's main damage his main damage is one auto right which is going to be empowered with a little bit of damage sure if you build lich bane which who builds that anymore besides fizz um but the main thing is his q his Q is supposed to be like the main damage because he has no damaging ult. This is where I don't think he should be like Ori. Ori obviously can't nuke them because what's the point of the ult setting up the team fight if the enemy's all dead? Then Ori could do everything. Her kit doesn't make sense. This is where TF, I think it does make sense for him to do a lot of damage. So let's see what they're doing. Twisted Fate hasn't been doing hot in solo queue and hasn't had much presence in pro. We're looking to till the odds in his favor a bit more. With this buff, we want to increase the amount of individual power in his kit by putting more damage into his Q. Oh, shit. Especially during later stages of the game where he can't walk up to his opponents too closely unless he builds rapid fire, which is fucking disgusting. So, his magic damage is going up by 10% from 80 to 90 scaling. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Eh, okay, change. And then Vex, which is somehow not the last change. Holy shit, because I forgot they're going to do Vi. What do I think of Vex? I don't know. I think Vex is pretty good. If I honestly see anything with Vex, I can see them nerfing her. Even though I don't think she's crazy crazy, any champion with resets can really get out of hand in Riot size, so I don't imagine them buffing her. Because I don't think she's too weak either, but let's see. Vex has been feeling more downcast than usual. <laughs> Excuse me. So we're looking to add a little bit more pep to her step. I think her fucking walk animation is so cute. This patch we're trying to buff her early spells without amplifying her already sharp matchups. And I feel like Vex kind of scales like a truck too. For her cooldowns versus how much damage she's able to dish out at the range she is, I think she's really fucking good. And the fact that she counters mobility is just the cherry on top too. Instead of touching anything that requires the enemies to be dashing, which she already does well at fighting. So her Q is getting buffed by 10% or sorry by 10 base which is not bad and then her w is on a little bit of a lower cooldown early which is cool this changes almost nothing v so i'm assuming they're going to say the same thing the same shit as the other people we're going to preemptively nerf vi because her items are going to get better but let's see because i feel like vi is kind of ass but i have been seeing her in pro play in the in the games i have been sort of hearing about i i believe she is in pro play which one i don't know but let's see Vi has certainly been a bit of a balanced roller coaster this year right now she's in a very weak spot uh nurse removed most of her pro presence what we're trying to do with Vi is steer her into a mid-sized fighter build away from building full tank or full assassin i actually think as a full tank she's probably better assassin she will get the job done but she's like any other assassin. If you go in with her, you just die. You straight up just like are fucked. But you're going to kill where you're going to kill. And then I feel like tank for her is just honestly better. Just because her kit really complements it. So what are they doing? We're increasing the value of her basic attacks. And W is a tank tool. What? Her E should make it less important to max ability. Meaning players can move into maxing W. Wow. And then there's an R nerf. So let's see this. So. Flash Shield is going up by 2% from her passive. That's not bad. Her passive cooldown reduction on W is from 3 to 4. That's pretty good. Her cooldown on the E is going down from 14 to 12 early. That's not bad. And then her R is scaling not as hard. So again, we got to see the, the item changes, but this isn't too, too bad. Definitely Vi is getting some tankiness back, but she's losing damage for it, but that's fine wow and they're actually touching zareth so i believe recently they touched zareth and i think what they did was actually extremely good i forgot what they did but whatever they did i i called was going to be good so let's see if that's the case he should get nerfed zareth's support is currently performing well in solo queue that is disgusting poking the competition town until they have to reluctantly recall while the other builds or the other buffs had a larger impact mid they still increased his win rate as a support it's almost like support is linked to mid since his mid win strength is currently in a reasonable spot we'll be nerfing his access to mana which he literally has a passive to try and solve but okay his mana regen is going down again i don't know how much that means his mana surge passive is going up for mid so it's not necessarily getting worse 
just getting more rewarded for it in mid lane. And then the W cost of his, or the cost of his W is going from 110 to 120, so it's going up by 10. This is nothing. Unless the base mana regen really matters, this is really nothing. Holy shit, there's more changes. Zin Zhao, what do I think of Zin? I mean, obviously, again, the same thing as the other fighters. They might preemptively nerf him, but the items are probably going to be the big changing factor. So, but in general, I don't think Zin is that good anymore. Zin Zhao builds are mostly lighter in fighter space, which is common items, including Eclipse and Blade of the Ruined King. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. I think, in my eyes, Zin Zhao should be more of an assassin than anything. I don't see Zin Zhao as a fighter. I see him as an assassin. He could go fighter, but I think his main role should just be straight damage dealer. We want to make sure he feels supported in his heavier items like Trinity and Black Cleaver. By adding an HP ratio, is more likely to skip that to skip the really lethal items like collector and essence reaver see that's the fun zen though fun zen is like the essence reaver collector one let's see what are they gonna do so the passive every third strike is now not scaling off base damage it's scaling off hp wow and they took away the ad scaling too wow they really don't want him to build a certain way i think zen Zhao is worse for this I think they're not only getting rid of Sun Funge Zin Zhao, but they're pushing him more towards tank oriented, which is kind of just boring. But it is what it is. I think Zin Zhao is a little worse. And then Zo. Finally, the last champion update. Holy shit. In this patch, we want to give Zo a few tools to make her easier to play, which is interesting. We're removing the scaling need for MR Shred, which effectively doesn't do much before resistor built, anyways. We're also upping her base health since Zoe is very squishy. I mean, she's a little fucking girl. Uh, this should allow her to be more consistent lane. So, the base health is going up by 2 again. I don't know. Or sorry, 1. I don't know what that really means. And then her E, the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, is now 30% in all ranks. So that is a pretty good buff. Overall, Zoe is decently better. And then going to the items. BT, this shit's probably going to get nerfed because they want people to build um, the other one. Shield Bow. So what are they doing? Bloodthirster is just slightly overperforming as a greedy purchase for winning players. It's proven to be in a solid shape for an item, and we're happy that players can easily stick to two shields in the same build, but it needs a small tuning. So instead of the health threshold being 50, now it's 70. I'm okay with this. It's definitely worse, but I'm still okay with it. Duskblade of Drahar. This item is so weird. I feel like this item is good, but I barely play Assassin, so I don't know. I think the biggest change from it making you not invisible to untargetable, in my eyes, was it, it was a buff, but it was a nerf. I think overall, knowing what it is now and playing with it for a while, I think it's overall a buff because untargetable means you can dodge stuff. Invisible means you can still get hit by everything. So I do think overall the sound has gotten better over time. But let's see what they're doing. So Night Walker, or sorry, Night Stalker passive has been changed to Funksy Match our, our untargetable effects. Okay. Uh, no longer makes the owner immune to damage while untargetable. That is garbage. That is garbage. Duskblade is garbage now. Now that there's incoming non-tower projectiles when triggered. Okay, maybe not fully garbage, but I think this is still pretty bad. The fact that you can get hit by stuff while untargetable, which means it's not like a Gwen W, is kind of tragic. I think Duskblade is definitely worse for wear. Even Shroud, they said they were going to nerf this, so let's see. Even Shroud is consistently overperforming as a support tank mythic, obviously. And it's so strong, we've been seeing getting poached cross class. Wow. So the damage amp is going from 10 to 7. Ooh, that's going to hurt. That's 30%. Uh, I still think people will use Even Shroud, but I think if they nerf it one more time, then people might go to block it. But let's see. Gore Drinker. I feel like when I ever, whenever I use Gore Drinker, the shit does not heal me at all. But let's see. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to buff it. Gore Drinker is meant to be a heavy fighter item with durability and its primary output. This should be the go-to item for fighters whose goal is to live as long as possible, aka Aatrox. So raising its soft efficiency and durability should help with that. What are they doing? So they're increasing the costs. 300 to 400, it looks like. And they're changing the build to phage which makes me question oh no no they changed phage so phage used to give you moose speed now it gives you health regen 
I guess this makes sense. Uh, I don't really understand how good this changes, so we'll just leave it for now. Immortal Shield Bow, the item that is pretty much exclusively used by no one. It's supposed to be used by ADs, but it's used by no one. Shield Bow is a little weak in its current state. That's an understatement. We're really happy with cutting it off from being a good first item purchase, as it quickly makes champions' interactions less and less meaningful and lame. If players want to buy it second, it means laying a high value option like IE, Gale Force, or Quick Blades, even though you're supposed to build those first, which is a meaningful opportunity cost. We're, com we're comfortable with players making these trade off decisions, so we're amping up the early shield value to make it more enticing. So, how much are they making this enticing? 215 to 290. That is pretty enticing, honestly. That's not bad. But uh, this is for bitches, so don't be a bitch. Oh, dear Lord, Spear of Shojin. So again, I think the only real people who use this off the top of my head the most is probably Jax. I honestly can't even name who else uses this. But uh, let's see what they're doing. In this patch, our goal is to make Spear a solid middleweight fighter item. The stat efficiency is receiving a significant buff, and its unique passive is being heavily buffed. Wow. We expect some champions like Hecarim and Jax to be very pleased with this buff. Interesting. Uh, we'll follow up as needed, obviously, obviously. Okay, let's see what they're doing. So the recipe changing. Combined cost is changing. The attack damage is going down. The health is going up. And now it's called the Dragon Force. So what are they doing? Uh, Jesus Christ. So the ability haste is going up a lot. Jesus and for range too interesting this is a buff before 200 ad so once you get 200 ad it's a nerf interesting i mean i can't really talk on this too much because again i feel like spear of shojin is very niche i mean they literally said the main two that i could think of that use it hecarim and the uh, jacks but aside from that i mean it, it is decently better these these buffs aren't nonsense buffs they are decent but only time will tell static this item sucks ass Let's see what they're doing. The goal, I think I've talked enough about static in the past too. But anyway, the goal behind static shift's AP ratio was to create another hybrid item that would suit champions who want to auto and had AP scaling. I think this item is becoming too over encompassing, or is that that's what Riot was doing with it? They were making it trying to appeal to too many things. Uh, somewhat similar to Nasher's Tooth and Rage Blade. For many hybrid building champions, Kaisa Varus also ended up pretty reasonable. However, LeBlanc has made it her go-to item, which is insane. Even after nerfing it, which is wild. So they're nerfing it some more. So bonus damage against champions is actually going down from 30 to 15 AP. They're slashing it in half. Oof. I feel like the static is still so much inferior to the old static, but in other ways, it's, it's actually pretty good. This nerf is actually going to hurt, though. Wow. Especially since it's against champions, too. Stride Breaker. This item fucking sucks. I feel like the only person who builds this is Garen. Let's see. This item is actually quite strong. Well, I don't believe them. It doesn't have a lot of core users that are able to use it effectively. This light buff here should give it more damage and less durability than Gore Drinker, except a solid more durability than Triforce. So the health is going up by 75. That's almost nothing. That's trash. Stride Breaker is still trash. So... Runes, future markets. I barely use this one because I hate going in debt because real life, I don't need to be reminded of that in the game. So the debt limit is now getting buffed. Future market is simply an overperforming rune and is being consistently picked by junglers. This change should help balance the rune options. Really? Oh, so it's starting lower is actually a nerf. Okay. This is a buff starting at 18 minutes. Wow. Yeah, Future Market, I don't like using it. I mean, it, it definitely has its place, but I don't like it. So, now we have some system updates. Interesting. Catch-up experience in the jungle has mostly been working as intended. There are a few unusual cases. Uh, this is usually due to the way an average level calculation was rounding. So, in some cases, a player was just barely over two levels. Interesting. We're shifting the way it rounds to not only round up. And this resolve a lot of rare cases. Um, okay, so this is just seems like quality of life. And then Dragon Patience. Riding the Patience part to all dragons this patch. Holy shit, they're making jungle even easier. Coming to our and other objectives, dragons will now have a visual indicator when you can leash them. If the dragons move outside the leash range, it'll 
begin depleting patients. So it's basically just like large jungle camps. We're hoping this change will clarify dragon's range. Wow, so it's again, it's a nerf for the, for the guppies. The only way to get a functioning patient spar and leash indicator was to rebuild the dragon from the ground up? Wow. That means no more selling behaviors like the dragon doing jumping squats? Oh, I remember those. So added a patient spar and leashing range indicator, and they should have also added they improved the um the AI. But they didn't. Interesting. I remember just them, so we don't care. Blue Essence Emporium, I already talked about that. New champion illustration icons. This is the newest way for Riot to gain money. They would have given us this in the past for free, but now they're making it cost money, so that's cool. Bug fixes and quality of life. I do not care. And finally, we get to the final part of the video, which is upcoming skins and chromas. So, we have a new whole cosmic skin line. Now, I love space. Space is one of my guilty pleasures. But to be honest, these skins, aside from the Belveth one, don't look too crazy. I've seen the Nautilus one. It looks stupid as hell. I think Astro's better. Cosmic Sun, I haven't seen, but it looks cool as shit. And then Cosmic Nunu, why? And then the worst part of it all is, again, every time something like comes out with League, there's a controversy. And this one, rightly so. I forgot if I made a video of it on YouTube, but I believe I might have, but I don't know. But um, this is where this gin skin is basically a $200 chroma. I I'll say it before and I'll say it again. Riot over time has just gone worse with the monetization with how much money they're trying to like scrape out of us. I don't know if it's because their other games are getting more attention or League is dying, who the fuck knows. But this shit is so ass and Riot's response to the community who knows this is for whales because it's from a gotcha system is basically like, okay, we're listening, but we're not changing anything, but we're listening, which means... Someone's forcing Riot to do this, probably an executive or a suit who wants more money. And the sad part is there, it's going to take time to probably change this. But sad that Dark Cosmic Erasure Gin is not a Mythic Chroma, which I would have gladly bought. Instead, it's a thing for whales, and we all know what whales are. They are profitable, as Genshin, Star Rail, or any gotcha on mobile has shown. So there's definitely people who are going to roll for this in the minority, and that's going to be enough for Riot to probably continue it even though it should not be continued so it's very sad but overall these skins are not bad i mean i love the cosmic theme i think again the belveth one is the best i think nautilus looks fucking ugly as shit Zion looks okay and then nunu looks fucking weird but overall not bad so this is where looking at the whole patch overall i actually you know aside from the ad changes being like very insignificant and not even there I think overall they did change things that weren't terrible. I don't think anything here was like cringeworthy. So overall I would say this patch actually isn't too bad. I would honestly make this a 6 out of 10. I think 6 out of 10 Mark Miles is fair. But anyway, I'm going to try and cut this as short as I can. We are under an hour thankfully, which is surprising. But that's going to be it for me. This was 6 out of 10 Mark Miles. This is all a giant advertisement for my Twitch channel, Twitch TV Sask Technics channel. Where I'm going to hopefully stream after this. And I hope everyone enjoyed. And hopefully I'll see everyone in less than two weeks. When I'll remember to do the patch notes.